to tell somebody in Congress why they should pay attention? What would you tell them? There is very strong science. You will see that the scientific evidence is clear that there are effects for EMF, that are all electromagnetic fields. I say all electromagnetic fields because one of the things that everyone here is focused on primarily is the wireless issue, I mean the, the smart meter issue. But the fact is that these effects are all over the EMF spectrum. Virtually every part of the range has the same kind of effect on DNA. So the DNA is like a summing junction. It, it brings all of these effects into the biology. And while people may say that the standards are uh, protected, they can't possibly be protected if, uh, if you see one standard, let's say RF, and then ELF is coming in also, and they have another standard, but they're all adding together in the same biology. So I think that's one thing, but the effects are additive. And one should take that into consideration, even though you focus on a particular issue. Uh, the other point I think that, that's important uh, to realize is that the, uh, the DNA is something that is in, it's indicative of the health of the cell. The cell can't do its job without it. But if it happens to hit the germ cell, it can affect the, the species. It can, it can lead to deterioration. In other words, there can be problems, mutations, and things that are really devastating to the human population in the long run. So this is a long-term effect as well, even though we focus only on the particular uh, uh, the effects of the moment. So what would you say when people say that, but there's no proof that there's any harm, and uh, we don't have an epidemic of brain cancer, and everybody, uh, we're, we're healthier, we're living longer than ever, except for Africa. So what, what's your response to that? Well, proof is a very uh, funny thing. I mean, it's, if you look up the definition of proof, you'll see that the, uh, it's evidence that's presented to uh, uh, make you accept uh, the truth of, of, of a statement. In other words, uh, that's what proof constitutes. And uh, when somebody says there's no conclusive proof, uh, it's redundant. Either there's proof or there's no proof. And conclusive means you either and you don't accept it you say there's no conclusive proof, because you take the evidence. And what I'm saying is that the evidence that exists in science, the scientific evidence, is really overwhelming. I would add a comment to that, which is that um, the proof, as you know, often comes down to where are the sick people or dead bodies. And that kind of proof should not be the basis of public policy, but that is how we set public policy on the back. We waited until we had massive epidemics and irrefutable evidence. And I think the point of this summit and the point of all that we're trying to do is not to get to that point. <coughs> there is already a lot of evidence that's in the record. I was just uh, speaking uh, with one of the participants here uh, that the, uh, about the book Dirty Electricity by Sam Millam. And he has collected a century worth of evidence regarding the effect of power frequency on EMM and has shown that it correlates with the incidence of cancer, cardiovascular disease, even suicide, which, by the way, is something that is uh, starting to trickle into news reports. So that there, there's a tremendous amount of evidence. The question is, people choose to not look at it, and they say there's no proof. Well, they, there is a lot of evidence. And at some point, you've got to realize that you've got to take action on the basis of that. This is, this is the book, um, and Sam Millen has put it together. And then, I, and then I, but I would say to you that industry has been very effective in marginalizing books like this, including this one, including my own, um, which, although I was a National Book Award finalist and had sold 40,000 copies of my other nonfiction books, which were a lot more arcane and obscure, this one is somehow just not made much of a dent. And I think it's not an accident because even though this is a, an excellent compilation of the information, we haven't succeeded. Now, I think Libby Kelly and Camilla might have some comments on how industry has worked to marginalize and, and make this issue not, uh, not go so well. So maybe if you'd like to comment, Libby? I'll, I'll come up here. I'm Libby Kelly, and I've been working on this issue about 15 years. And I have been watching industry behavior because, of course, we need to counter that wherever we can. I mean, 
obviously one way which many people speak back to the industry is through blogs or that are attached to news articles, like the Newsweek article that we just published a few days ago, taking a, a big chuckle, making a big chuckle about smart meters and the reactions that people have to them to kind of dismiss the concerns. And this is what they do. They have so much more money than we do. But someone who's in this room once told me that we are like little gnats. We just buzz around and we give them a little sting occasionally just to let them know we're there. And we keep at it and we keep informing. Right, Mary Beth? Yes. <laughs> it's from Mary Beth Wright. We just keep informing them and stay there and keep telling them about our concerns and giving them the facts as we see them and we participate in the debate. And now there's more of us doing that. And the more we do that, the more impact we can have. We're never going to have as much money as they do to have a media machine to keep churning out their view of the truth. But we have our view of the truth, and we should keep pumping it out. Thank you, Libby.